Mr. Beast has taken on some dangerous challenges over the years, from attempting to spend 24 hours underwater, to getting buried alive, to being trapped for a day in ice. But his latest challenge, without question, is the most dangerous to date. I am not eating any food for the next 30 days. Are you sure about that? Seriously, listen to the talking head of John Cena there, Jimmy. Not eating for that long is, in fact, more dangerous than all your other challenges combined. Wh which, uh, come to think of it, would be a banger of a video for the channel. 24 hours, buried alive, in ice. All joking aside, though, if you watched his most recent video, you saw Jimmy in mortal danger. And the most dangerous part wasn't the part that you might expect. You see, there was one man who was almost responsible for killing Mr. Beast before our eyes. And that man was Gordon Ramsay. At least yeah. take a bite. Who's the idiot sandwich now, Gordo? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the only show where the host has never eaten because I'm an animated PNG from 10 years ago. So, Jimmy Donaldson, Mr. Beast, always the YouTuber most known for taking things to unreasonable extremes, especially when it comes to food. He's eaten the world's biggest slice of pizza, he's created the world's largest bowl of cereal, and he sampled the world's most expensive foods. But his latest food challenge is a whole different level of extreme, challenging himself to spend 30 days not doing something, eating. If I for any reason eat food in the next 30 days. Chris, you get to shave my head. Now, it should go without saying that this is the kind of thing that you absolutely should not try at home. Something that Jimmy, to his credit, makes abundantly clear multiple times throughout the video. Seriously, do not try this at home. I had a whole team of doctors watching me every single day. But you kind of got to ask yourself why. Like, what's really the big deal here? You don't have energy for a couple days? Your body slowly eats itself if and when it finally gets really hungry? Like, what is the real immediate danger of this situation? I mean, if things get really bad, you could just, you know, nab a sandwich or something and boom, problem over, right? Wrong. Very wrong. Very, very wrong. Even though I think we all inherently understand that not eating is kind of dangerous, I don't think we actually have a proper understanding of just how immediately dangerous it is. So that's what I want to talk about today. Crash diets, fasting, and how Gordon Ramsay almost killed Mr. Beast. Now what Mr. Beast is doing in this video is going on what's officially known as a crash diet, where a person dramatically cuts their food intake to an extremely low number of calories overnight. And he's far from the first person to do this sort of thing. A popular crash diet those of us alive back in the early 2000s may remember is the Master Cleanse. This was a diet that promised to flush the body of deadly toxins as long as you consumed nothing but a mixture of lemonade, maple syrup, cayenne pepper, and water for three days straight. It was such a big thing at the time, in fact, that it became immortalized in an episode of The Office. I am on the third day of my cleanse diet. I just bought some bikinis online, size two. So, look amazing. But for as extreme as that diet might sound, and it is, the quote-unquote diet that we see taken by Jimmy is far, far worse. What he did was known as a water fast, or voluntary total fasting. And for as intense as it is, it's not all that uncommon. It's actually the same thing that we see used during many hunger strikes. Which leads us then to our first major question of the episode, how possible was Jimmy's goal in the first place? He set out to not eat for 30 days straight. Ultimately, he ends up folding after two weeks. But could could he have kept going? And if so, could he have possibly survived for another 16 days? The answer, shockingly, is yes. In fact, we got to see one high-profile example of this from magician-turned-endurance artist David Blaine. After being buried alive and then frozen in ice, David then decided his third major stunt would be to live in a plexiglass box without food hanging over London. He did this to, um, uh, I don't know, something about showing strength of humanity. Obviously, it was a big marketing stunt for the guy. Personally, my head canon is that he wanted to live like a Funko Pop for a couple weeks. Anyway, hold on. What did I just say? Buried alive, frozen in ice, no food for 30 days. Is David Blaine actually programming Jimmy's channel right now? Just saying, if Mr. Beast starts hanging upside down or wrapping himself with Tesla coils, we'll know who's secretly pulling the strings on that channel. Anyway, David managed to make it 44 days without food, so the 30-day goal? Absolutely possible. And that's not even the upper limit here. When it comes to voluntary total fasting, doctors estimate that the average male could live close to two months off of water alone. Not easily live off of it, mind you, just possible. You see, eventually your body will fully burn through its fat reserves and it'll start to break down the protein in your muscles in order to survive. In the David Blaine example, with 44 days without food, he lost organ and bone mass, developing both breathing and heart problems, so obviously not great for your health. That said, the current world record holder for the longest fast without solid food is Angus Barbieri, who went a whopping 382 
382 days. Let me just say that again in case the number didn't quite land. 382 days. He went over a year without solid food. Now, to be fair, he had more than just water in his diet. He lived on tea, coffee, vitamins. He also had some yeast in his diet to provide essential amino acids. Also, small bits of sugar here and there to boost his energy levels. But still, this guy put the 30-day goal to shame. Here's the clickbait title for you. I went a year without eating. And the thing is, it's not even clickbait. In that time, he lost 276 pounds, 125 kilograms, going from 456 pounds down to 180, or 247 kilograms to 82. Which brings us to our next interesting point about Jimmy's video, weight loss. Over the course of the 14 days, we see Jimmy lose 18 pounds. That equates to approximately 1.28 pounds per day. An absolutely terrifying rate. But what you might not have noticed is that the weight loss isn't consistent across all that time. Day by day, we get a breakdown of Jimmy's total weight, and you'll notice that there's actually a huge difference between his weight loss in week one versus that in week two. Out of 18 total pounds lost, 12 come out of week one, and only six happen in week two. Why is there such a big difference? Is he cheating somehow? Maybe he's eating on the side during week two when the going gets tough? No, in fact, the results are exactly to be expected. For the first few days of starvation, the body is going to use up its store of glycogen in the liver and muscles. Basically, it's using up whatever spare sugar reserves it might have hanging around. Each gram of glycogen, though, also comes packaged with around three grams of water. So when you're burning up the sugar for energy, that water is also getting released, and water is heavy. So losing it is going to help you to drop weight fast. This is what's commonly known as water weight, and it's the reason why weight tends to come off quickly in the first few days after you start dieting or exercising. It's only once you've burned through the glycogen reserves in your body that you start to use up your fat supplies, and fat is actually much more energy dense. As a result, it takes a lot more work to burn, resulting in slower weight loss. In general, a pound of fat is going to be about 3,500 calories. Considering Jimmy is 6 foot 3 inches, his metabolism is going to be passively chewing through around 3,000 calories per day. That's why, from day 8 onward, we see his weight loss slow dramatically to between 0.7 and 1 pound per day. His natural metabolism is burning about 1 pound of fat per day just from existing. So if his energy is slowly being eaten away, how do you explain this? Today is day number 6, and for whatever reason, I'm feeling really good. I'm starting to think this is actually possible. On day 6, Jimmy reports that he's feeling better. Why? What, what changed? At this point, he's used the last of his glycogen stores. Shouldn't his energy be dipping considerably? Well, interestingly enough, this phenomenon is actually pretty common among dieters, and it actually has nothing to do with food. When you go on a diet, any diet, your body is going to be feeling withdrawal. And not just from caffeine, sugar, and fatty foods, but from the dopamine in your brain. Now, we talk about dopamine all the time across these channels, so I'm not going to bore you with the details, but dopamine is the reward chemical in the brain. You eat something tasty and sweet, boom! Your brain is going to get flooded with the stuff to reward that behavior. It feels good, and you're going to want to do it again. But once you cut out those delicious, rewarding foods, your brain stops getting rewarded as well. Instead, it starts to produce elevated levels of stress hormones. It tries to get you back into your normal routine. And this is true for more than just food. The exact same thing happens when someone tries to stop doing something like smoking. It's withdrawal. So basically, the reason we're so cranky when we start a diet is because we're junkies for food. But typically, after about five to seven days, those withdrawal symptoms subside and your stress levels recalibrate. You achieve a new normal. And that's exactly what we see here with Jimmy on day six. But while his withdrawal symptoms went away, this didn't. So, funny story. I just pooped. And that's significant because this was my first poop in over a week. If he's not eating anything, why? How? What? Well, there's no real delicate way of saying this, but your poop? It's more than food. Poop is actually 75% water. The rest of it, a lot of it is just dead bacteria and blood cells. That's actually why your toilet torpedoes down there are brown, even when you haven't eaten anything brown. That would be bilirubin, which is what the body discards when red blood cells die. Have fun sharing that one with the family the next time you're sitting at the dinner table. I'm sure they'll thank you. But enough about excrement, now it's time to talk about the most dangerous part of the entire video. And shockingly, it's not the no eating part. The most dangerous thing we see him do is take a single bite. On the final day, day 14, Jimmy faces off against Chef Gordon Ramsay, and we see this. I'm gonna make a sandwich. Are you telling me now you're not gonna <gasps> eat it? Nope, I'm not talking about the dangers of being in the same room with an angry Brit. I'm talking about the dangers of eating Gordon's cooking. At least yeah. take a bite. You'll be yeah. the first person in my entire okay. career that I've cooked something from start to finish. You've never eaten it, please. <sighs> Gordon Ramsay's peer pressure here might have been fatal if Jimmy had actually given in. We get a small taste as to why within the video itself in the form of two mysterious words, refeeding syndrome. I'll take one bite, and I have this video <laughs> technically because of refeeding syndrome, but I still want to just taste it. What Mr. Beast doesn't go on to elaborate
elaborate here is that refeeding syndrome can be fatal. You see, the basic idea is that after going so long without eating food, reintroducing food, even in small amounts into the body, can drastically alter your body's chemistry. This, in turn, can throw your metabolism way out of whack if it's not done in a careful and controlled manner. Is Mr. Beast only taking a single bite and then immediately spitting it out a bit over the top? No. In fact, it's absolutely not. It seems almost like a big diva moment, a severe overreaction to him losing his challenge, like, oh, I guess I'll take a single bite, but I won't swallow. But in reality, Mr. Beast is doing the exact right thing here by not eating anything that's not doctor approved. <laughs> in my life. But you can't just have an influx of carbs after not eating for 14 days. Spot on there, Jimmy. Someone's been listening to his doctor. By default, our bodies are programmed to get our fuel from carbohydrates. But over the past two weeks of fasting, Jimmy's body has effectively switched from getting fuel from carbs to getting fuel from fat tissue and amino acids. In this new operating mode, certain organs of the body, like the spleen, start to function differently. He can't all of a sudden go back to eating like he used to because his body is literally not equipped right now to process carbs. It's gonna take a while on a controlled diet to get his body back to the way it was. And not only does he need to watch the type of food that he's eating, but he also needs to moderate the amount of food he's eating. This is not the time to go binge eating. If anything, the opposite is true. In some cases, patients at risk of refeeding syndrome need to receive as little as 5 calories per kilogram of body weight per day. Under normal circumstances, a typical 6 foot 3 inch male would need between 2200 and 3200 calories per day. But on day 14 of total fasting, Mr. Beast's body would only be equipped to handle around 400 158 calories. Even in the best case scenario where he's getting the full green light from all of his doctors, he should be eating at most 916 calories per day, slowly incrementing upward toward normal levels over the course of the next week. If he doesn't, the complications can include cardiac arrest or respiratory failure. Things that could literally kill him. And no, that's not me being over dramatic here for content. People dying during refeeding syndrome is a very real risk. In a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, researchers looked at over a dozen patients who died after going on an extremely low calorie diet and they found that 35% of those patients died not during the diet itself but during the post dieting phase when they tried eating foods that their body wasn't ready for yet. Seriously, it's a good thing that Jimmy knew how to stay safe and follow doctor's orders because if he had started scarfing down Gordon's food, it would not have ended well for anyone. Gordon makes this big deal about how no one has ever turned down food that he's made for them before. Well Gordon I think it would be way worse if your food actually killed someone live on camera. Now of course I'm not accusing poor Gordon of intentionally trying to kill our friend Mr. Beast. I'm sure that, if anything, he thought it would be helping and improving Jimmy's health by getting him to finally eat food after a 14-day fast. It seems like basic common sense that, for someone in that situation, eating food is healthier than not eating it. But, uh, rarely is human biology so simple. It just goes to demonstrate a key point here, which is that these kinds of quote-unquote experiments can be extremely dangerous in ways that you would never be able to anticipate. Seriously, who going into this video would have assumed that the most dangerous part of a 14-day fast would be the moment that he finally breaks that fast? Human Human biology is incredibly complex, and Jimmy had an entire team of doctors that were checking all of his vitals on a daily basis. He did it for the content, but what we're not seeing is likely just as interesting as what made it onto the camera. The post-fast process of his body literally having to relearn how to digest normal food. And once that's done, it's only a matter of time before he follows it up with the complete opposite challenge. Eating everything at a Las Vegas buffet. Let's just say that his digestion is in for one wild roller coaster. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Speaking of eating a whole buffet, take a nibble on the video on the right, which is going to teach you how to do exactly that. And hey, if you want to see our detailed scientific breakdown of another Mr. Beast stunt, check out this video where we break down the Willy Wonka chocolate river and find that it's actually way more practical than you might think. And as always, if you're hungry for even more knowledge, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you all next week.